Hello and welcome back to another War Tales guide. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our 10 tips I wish I knew when I started the game. This is a compilation of useful tips that you should know when you're about to start uh, War Tales. I will keep it as always information dense, no repetition and quick infos for you. So without further ado, tip number one, how to make money in the game. When I was starting with War Tales, I felt uh, that I was struggling a lot with uh, money and without a shadow of a doubt, unless you want to break the game by abusing the steel mechanic, which is highly overpowered, uh, then the best, second the best way of uh, dealing with the money issue is to actually visit uh, the local inn. Within every local inn, you will find a uh, task giver that I'll will allow you to review certain contracts. I would always suggest at the beginning of uh, the game to take easy contracts, take an indication where the contracts are, um, try to accept the contract at the later stage once you do have negotiation, try to uh, trade in your fame uh, or influence for negotiation and you will uh, see that you get relatively decent prices. Within a single day you can typically um, do two or three of these contracts without a problem. Uh, combine that with your normal route and you will uh, start getting quite a bit of money. Which brings us to tip number two, how to deal with food. Uh, food at the beginning of the game will be sparse and you want to make sure that uh, all of your mercenaries are at least well fed. Uh, so I wish I knew I'd lo as long as uh, the happiness stays at 15, you can forego feeding for a couple of days. Typically you can go two to three days without food. Uh, the only impact will be your uh, happiness. That in um, exchange, however, means if you go too long without food, you will get negative food perks or the group uh, decides to kill the pony and start eating it. So how to deal with that? There are a couple of ways around it. Number one, I would suggest at the beginning not to go with too many animal companions. They are very heavy on the food side and uh, in exchange for that, uh, they do not cost any money. So forego them and instead focus on your mercenaries in the first, say, two hours of the game. Number two, there are a couple of um, options of how to reduce the food cost. A few of them you will find in the paths. Asceticism is one. You will find that in Mysterious and Wisdom. Strict rationing uh, and power of glory is one. Uh, you will uh, find that for another th uh, three as in reduction and in the normal uh, in the normal uh, knowledge points you will find that rationing allows another uh, flat minus three uh, food so that's already nine food uh, all together if you build the cooking pot and put a cook right next to it it reduces the food consumption by two if that cook is a little bit better over time it reduces it by six so that in itself is already 15 reduced food on top of it i highly recommend that you're going with a uh, cook of sorts with relatively uh, few ingredients you can uh, start making food the easiest or cheapest recipe is just buying wheat and salt that gives you the best bang for the buck uh, and as long as you don't have carnivores or other meat eaters you should be fine you can feed the group and save a lot of money that way Next problem, how to deal with carry capacity. I wish I knew that ponies are quite helpful in that. Uh, short tip from my side, make sure that your ponies are carry ponies and out of combat ponies only. You never want to go with a war pony. It is simply not worth it. Uh, you can increase the carry capacity by the ponies. You can also increase its further duration and make sure that uh, once you do have unlock career path, should be one of your first uh, skills that uh, first infos that you're unlocking um, you should always increase the constitution as that increases the base value of carrying capacity on top of it you can relatively soon craft saddlebags um, any tinker can do them relatively uh, good from the get-go and one to two ponies at the beginning should be okay three ponies if you're a hoarder four at the end game and it gives you really a lot of carry capacity. I wish I knew that in advance because uh, that would have made my life much, much simpler. 
Tip number four, I wish I knew how to dismiss companions. I was getting flooded by companions and I had a more difficult time to get uh, rid of them if I, when I wanted. It is not quite obvious, but you need to be in the camp. Then you can go into manage companions and you can also dismiss them. Fun fact uh, here, if you have captured uh, mm, uh, fugitives or captives this is also the way to release them and make them join your party once their trust is high enough so I wish I knew that in advance it helped me a lot once it uh, once I found it out pro tip on top of that uh, kind of a bonus tip if you want to bench a couple of companions uh, there is always the uh, trade um, a com a companionship where you can leave a companion they will not cost any wages or food during the time and just wait uh, for your arrival so if you want to slim down your party or try a different party composition that's the way to go you can build those trade posts once you're done with a certain area uh, the first one costs uh, 500 the second one a thousand and every single one afterwards be uh, between a thousand and thousand five hundred and they also allow you to store your goods plus travel in between locations without cost next tip tip number five and that was one that I learned the hard way under tinkering uh, you will find a few camp uh, upgrades I was when I was playing under the impression uh, that uh, I've already built a campfire so why would I learn another campfire and the game doesn't do a very good job in explaining that it is indeed a campfire star so an upgraded campfire uh, so pro tip here you can upgrade your camp and it is actually quite good particular uh, i would uh, suggest to you that you upgrade your campfire that uh, you upgrade your strategy table and uh, that you upgrade your workbench as well as uh, the uh, cooking table the uh, cooking pot um, plus the tent. Those would be the five um, uh, the five ones that give you the best bang for the buck. Everything else is also giving you nice um, bony, but those in particular. And of course, uh, honorable mention, if you have already gotten the training dummy, then of course you want to upgrade that to uh, mm, as uh, the highest priority. But yeah, don't sleep on uh, camp upgrades. They are actually quite good. Tip number six, how the party affection system works. That was unclear for me at the beginning, um, but here is the short rundown. Every uh, party member has a certain chance in interactions with others that are positively aligned to receive a positive relationship. There are a couple of events how this could trigger. The most relevant ones are typically fighting side by side in combat, uh, getting healed by others, uh, getting beneficial skills, i.e. buffs, shouts, uh, um, uh, leadership abilities and the like. Every time that you use it, there is a certain uh, cumulative chance that they will start liking one another better. The other interaction form is the campfire or any interaction where they collaboratively work toge uh, together. If they are sitting right next to one another, they will increase their relationship over time. However, um, keep the following in mind. If they are not liking each other, um, the relationships can also deteriorate. If you force people that do not like each other to sit next to each other, if you don't treat them well, then their relationship will also deteriorate. General uh, additional influence variable is the overall happiness. If the happiness is low, there are higher chances of negative intra-group conflicts. Whilst when the happiness is high, things are generally turning out well. You want to get uh, your party's happiness towards admirers or best friends, which is plus three, because the best friends bonus once they are fighting side by side in combat is absolutely fantastic. Damage and crit bonus, which is super helpful. So that's a free buff right there within combat. Tip number seven, how oils work within the game. So I slept on oils at uh, the very beginning and I can only tell you that that is a mistake. 
you do have the ability to create oils in the game with pristine essences. Pristine essences either can be bought or you can uh, destroy redness. If you destroy redness, you can create pristine essences. They are relatively easy to create. Vile fish oil, which always can be bought, and plague written samples, which gives you a pristine essence. Not only are oils good, but they will make your weapons significantly better. And here's the tip. Uh, what I didn't know in starting the game is that blue weapons can have one oil slot. Uh, 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 rare weapons and legendary weapons have two um, oil slots. You can always apply another oil, replace uh, an existing one, and it gives you really an absolutely fantastic opportunity to upgrade uh, the weapons. On top of it, uh, oils can be used to create trinkets, as in uh, when you th play through the game, you will get um, all of uh, the different recipes for it. They, these trinkets are actually also quite uh, good. They say uh, let oil effects apply 100% of the time in most of the cases, which makes it even stronger. So don't sleep on oils. They make your weapons substantially be uh, more good. Um, you also want to consider, um, in contrast to armor upgrades, which um, are a subject in itself, the oils cannot be removed, so once they are applied, they are permanently stuck to the weapon, so be a bit mindful with that. I don't want to end up like them. Tip number eight, how to upgrade skills. That was unclear for me at the beginning. You will find within uh, the world a couple of uh, Brotherhood training grounds. The first one um, in uh, the Tiltran uh, region is actually over here, so you can relatively easy and quickly find that. It's not cheap to upgrade skills, but it is worthwhile trying it. You will find skill mastery books that will allow you to upgrade skills besides the manual skills. And I should uh, make a two-in-one tip in that regard. You should try to get uh, those skills on all of your characters. In particular, first aid uh, is an incredibly important skill for all characters. Um, run is a very important skill, allows you to disengage from combat or reposition. And um, I would personally also put Wrath on most of the melee characters because it gives you another finisher. So that is the first half of the tip, but the actual second half of the tip are the skill mastery books. If you are looking at uh, skills uh, with, uh, within your skill tree, each of the base skills, um, each of the level 5 skills and each of the level 8 skills all can be improved. And I give you a, just a short flavor without um, um, any um, specification while taking the swordsman in this uh, regard. Destabilizing strike uh, applies higher destabilization once upgraded and lands critical hits. Uh, so that's a huge upgrade. Uh, Bulwark as an example typically gives you deflection when you engage the upgraded version also gives you a fury buff of 50% more damage. Hardcore training makes you immune to bleeding, poison and burning. And the upgraded version uh, tells you that whenever you are affected by that, you get plus two, uh, two rage stacks, which is a 10% damage uh, bonus. And on top of it, uh, it stacks, so there are no upper stacks for rage. My point is, you want to upgrade your skills. I wish I had known that in advance. It's a good money sink, and it is definitely helpful to make your uh, mercenaries the best version of what they could be. Tip number nine, how dynamic party sizing works. No matter if you're playing on region locked or adaptive, your party size does matter. I didn't know that, uh, but it came obvious, became obvious quite fast. Your party size is determined by the number of party com uh, combatants that you will field. Every single mercenary counts for one. So if you go with a standard six person party you will find yourself uh, running into anywhere between six to nine enemies sometimes up to ten throughout the entirety of the game uh, so the uh, size of the enemy party is one to 1.5 uh, times as large as your uh, party is if you add more mercenaries to the mix you will also uh, fight more enemies now 
What I didn't know is how animals count in that regard. I did a bit of testing. Small animals such as mole rats or plague rats count for 0.5. The game tends to round up. Medium sized animals such as wolves, boars and the like count for 1. Uh, the game uh, takes, an, uh, takes it as if it would be a mercenary. And larger sized animals such as bears count for 1.5. Uh, which means uh, for every two bears uh, you will um, fight three more enemies. So if you field a party of an effective size of 50, you will fight against 50 to 75 enemies in most of the fights, cl completely shifting of course the meta and how the fights uh, progress. You see in this particular case we have six uh, combatants, plus a bear, so that makes it seven and a half. And I've just engaged uh, two uh, parties that were fighting with each other, mainly to show off uh, that uh, the kind of range. You do have eight en enemies here and nine enemies on the other side. These could be individual encounters uh, either way. The point is, uh, these uh, animals uh, are good uh, approximations of how large uh, the parties that you're fighting against typically are. So keep that in mind when you're building up your party, every single added uh, mercenary will also increase the enemy party size. Tip number 10 is a double tip, um, two combat related tips. Number one or 10A would be, I wish I knew that I could preview uh, the skills. Have you ever wondered uh, if you do have, for instance, a cleave skill uh, that would hit a couple of enemies and you never know exactly how to position. Want to know more, you can right click the skill and you can see depending on your mouse cursor, uh, it will dynamically tell you whether or not you are uh, correctly positioned. That could be incredibly helpful. Works with any skill, by the way. I take challenging shout as an example uh, here um, when we're moving in sprinting uh, through them, you can see uh, the preview tells us all three of them will be affected. No problem, we're pulling them towards us and are killing them in one go. So that is ten, uh, tip 10A. Off to tip 10B, I wish I knew how to capture anyone. So in order to capture uh, animals uh, to be animal companions, or to capture anyone in that regard. A person needs to be engaged in combat, it needs to be below 50% of health, and you need to have the right tools. Uh, for any form of animal, your right tool will be ropes. Uh, you will see that uh, this uh, skill, the knockout skill, requires a certain amount of ropes. For uh, humans, you need chains. And uh, the matter of the fact there is you want to engage, you want to reduce the hit points as much as possible. Once they are reduced, you can then uh, start uh, going behind their backs and start to, to knock them out. The chance of it uh, working will very much depend on uh, their uh, hit points. The lower the hit points are and the higher uh, your level is the better the chance for success in this case would be 100% uh, chance. Keep in mind, once you have captured them, uh, humans uh, need to take some while before they start to trust you. Animals immediately trust you. So I wish I knew how to capture them in advance because animal companions are quite interesting in the game. So that was it. 10 tips that I wish I knew when starting War Tales. Let me know which one of uh, them was particularly helpful. And do you have a tip uh, that was missing? Leave a comment uh, down below to help your fellow players. Thanks a lot and have a good one. Bye bye.